Yo me acuerdo que me encontraron para un baseball commercial. Anything I did, like I became really obsessed with it. But that's what really opened my eyes to just new fashion. I remember going to Zara and I was just like obsessed with it. The, the primer um, job que tenía en Los Angeles era para trabajar for 424 in Fairfax. Bienvenidos a Latinos Unidos. Están aquí con Andrés Izquierda. Estamos aquí para inspirar a Latinos por todo el mundo. Que no me importa, que lo voy a hacer. No vas a poder hacer nada, tienes que empezar por creértelo tú. No lo hago porque tú me dices que no lo hago. <risa> Pero realmente sé que es muy difícil. Bienvenidos a otro episodio de Latinos Unidos. Estoy aquí con mi amigo Luis Cano de Lush Network. Luis es un constructor y dueño de una agencia que se llama Lush Network, que es agencia de marketing y ventas de la moda. So, yo lo conozco a Luis uh, por mi amigo Sneaker Steve, que también mm -hmm. está aquí en episodio número 8, yo creo, de Latinos Unidos. Y uh, lo conozco ya el, por un rato y estoy súper entusiasmado. Uh, Luis es como king of cool de la moda. Uh, yo estuve con él recién en París y uh, fuimos a muchas fiestas súper <laughs> chidas esa noche. Uh, y no, so, estoy súper entusiasmado para introducir a Luis Cano. Buenas, buenas. So, ¿de dónde eres tú? So, yo nací en uh, una ciudad que se llama Salinas, California, uh -huh. enseguida de Monterrey. Ok. Uh, y viví allí por como unos 12 años. Y cuando tenía 13, me moví para Fresno. Ok. Fresno es tres horas de aquí. Es, you know, it's like Central California. Yeah. Um, no había nada en Fresno. You know what I mean? Cuando tenía 17 años me moví para Los Ángeles. Ok, ¿y tus padres de, de dónde son? Mis padres son de México. Ok. Mi papá nació en Mexicali. Ok. Y mi mamá nació en Salinas, California, donde soy. Y ella también es mexicana. Uh -huh. so, tú eres 100% mexicano. 100%. 100%. Ok, ¿y cómo fue tu infancia? Um, como en mi childhood. Yeah. You know, my childhood was in, in growing up in Salinas, you know, cuando en la casa que vivía yo era un rancho en frente de, you know, files de fresas. Okay. So, nomás, so, like, you know, <clears throat> hacíamos, vivía con mis, con mis abuelos, con mi abuelo, mi abuela, de, desde niño y, you know, ellos me cuidaban en el, en el verano y mi familia siempre estaba en mi casa porque mi papá era... Era, you know, the pioneer of my family. You know, mi papá era el primero que agarró sus papeles y tenía su casa primero y hizo el dinero primero que todos mis tíos y mis tías. Y, you know, siempre estaba con mis primos y tenía un, un hermano y hermana. Tengo hermano y hermana, pero son muchos más, they're older, they're like eight, nine years older. So it's like, I had two sets of parents. So I was really close to my younger cousins. Okay. Mis primos eran como mis hermanos. Okay. Pero, you know, muy, muy mexicano, you know what I mean? Like, sí, sí, sí. Carne sí. asada cada fin de semana, you know what I mean? Um, mariachi. Mariachi. La música. La música. You know, the typical Mexican, you know. Sí, 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 sí. Yeah. Y uh, tus primeros, like, acordancias de tu, de tu, ¿cómo se dice? De tu upbringing. ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo te acuerdas de esa vida ahí en Salinas? En Salinas, you know what I mean? Cuando era, cuando estaba niño, niño me... I was always really like curious, era muy curioso. Sí. So, <coughs> siempre quería saber lo que estaba haciendo mi papá, mi mamá. Y desde niño me puse a jugar béisbol. Cuando tenía tres años, mi hermano, él ya estaba jugando béisbol en high school y middle school. Y era como mi, como, you know, yo era muy, estaba muy cerca con mi hermano. Era, era, él era como mi papá. Uh -huh. Mi papá, yo, él, no, no hablábamos mucho. Okay. Es muy, um, ¿Serio? <laughs> es muy serio, mi papá. Ok. You know, like my brother really raised me. Ok. You know what I mean? So, cu ¿Cuántos años en diferencia? Es tenés? como nueve años. Ok. De diferencia. Todavía, y ya yeah. cuando te pusiste mayores, sí. tenía seis, el quince. Ya. Yeah, todavía yeah. él te podía enseñar. So, cuando tenía cuatro años, él tenía, what, como trece, catorce años, y ya estaba jugando béisbol, y yo lo miraba jugar diario. Y so, yo me puse a jugar béisbol cuando tenía cuatro años, y lo que me acuerdo... Es, era Tibo uh -huh. cuando empecé y yo, yo fui a la primera práctica y quería que me tiraran la pelota. I wanted them to pitch me the ball. No lo quería pegar del Tibo uh -huh. So I quit. I was like, I'm not going to do this. Okay. Like, I'm just like, I want to get the ball thrown at me. Like, I can, I can hit the ball. Sí. And so I quit. And then, uh, you know, pero siempre estaba en deportes desde niño. Nunca, nunca en moda. Siempre sí. en deportes y, 
You know what I mean? Y la moda en Salinas, ¿cómo era? Oh, muy fresa, como muy, dicen. Sí, muy fresa. <risa> Así dicen los mexicanos. Nadie, Super nadie, fresa. No, nadie sabía nada de... Ni, ni, apenas, apenas abrieron una, un H&M y un, un Zara. Like, no había nada de moda. No, nunca mi familia you know, se ponía nada de Gucci o Fendi o Off-White. There was nothing like that. You know what I mean? sí. so era, cuando crecí, yo nomás conocía a Paxson y a Macy's. Y, a, y teníamos mucho dinero mi familia. So, you know, When the summertime, we'd shop at like Ross in sí. Marshalls para, para ir para atrás de la escuela, you know, comprar ropa. So. No, 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 no más conocía lo que estaba en mi, you know, loco mo. Sí, ¿y qué tipo de estudiante eres? Siempre era... Fuiste. Siempre, no, no, no era muy travieso de niño, like siempre, siempre, you know, I was always really smart. I remember, you know, desde niño, cuando, me, cuando yo empecé a leer cuando tenía cuatro años, mm -hmm. más antes que, que otros niños de mi edad. Y siempre terminaba mi, mi trabajo, you know, muy, muy rápido de todos. Y so me puse a leer desde de niño chico. Siempre me puse a leer, a, me puse a leer los, los libros de Harry Potter, like, really, really young. I read every book by the time I was, like, 10, maybe. Uh -huh. Yeah, 10, 11. So I was a really smart kid, definitely, in school. ¿Y como qué te interesó en la escuela? Um, la escuela no, no, no me interesaba mucho. Yo siempre estaba... Muy activo, muy activo, you know, in sports, playing baseball at a young age. Um, I empezaba a jugar fútbol cuando tenía ocho años, and I became obsessed with it. Anything I did, like, I became really obsessed with it. Mm -hmm. So when I was in sports, I always just tried to be in the best, and, you know, cada año hice el all-star all team de baseball. Sí. Baseball is probably what I was best at. ¿Y como a qué edad tú te, te, te pensó estar, o a qué edad a ti te interesó la moda por la primera vez? Siempre... Porque obvio en Salinas es, like, no tienes tanto acceso a, yeah. a saber y, you know, y todo eso. Como la edad de, de 13, 14 años, es cuando el internet, yo creo, se... Estaba, era mucho más fácil para encontrar, you know, diferentes you know, marcas o cosas en el internet. Como, yo me acuerdo cuando Hypebeast se abrió, and it really started, and it was before them. You know, y, so, y, y yo, yo tenía, tenía un amigo que se llamaba Shane en high school. Y yo y él comprábamos mucha ropa. Y siempre queríamos hacer mucho diferente de todos. You know, cada persona tenía los mismos zapatos, y, uh, los mismos pantalones. Y they go to the same stores. And so, cuando ya tenía como 13 años, um, y vivía en Fresno. Y ni, yo, no, yo no vivía en Fresno. Vivía en una ciudad que se llama Ridley, que está más chico de Fresno. Nomás había one high school in my town. Sí. Everybody went to the same high school. Sí. Pero desde 13 años, um, yo me acuerdo que me encontraron para un baseball commercial. And I filmed a Gatorade commercial uh, in high school. When I was 14 years old now. Y me, Baller. Y me, <laughs> hey, hey, no me pagaron mucho, me pagaron como, like, I don't know, like, como 3 o 4 mil dólares. Pero ni, ni, ni lo podía, no, no me podían dar todo el dinero porque no tenía 18 años. Ok. So, más te dan como mitad y la otra mitad cuando tienes 18 es cuando lo puedes tocar. So, no hice nada con dinero, pero compré ropa. Okay. Pero yo me acuerdo cuando tenía 14 años, me fui a los, me vine a Los Ángeles por una semana to film the commercial. Y en esa semana tenía que, you know, I was just walking around actually downtown. Y me acuerdo, I went to the Beverly Center. Y era la primera vez que miré, you know, marcas. Y, y a ¿Qué año era esto? Uh, tengo 24 años, era como 10 años. 10, 10 years ago. Beverly Center. Yeah. Eso es cuando está. Yeah. 10 years ago, I stayed in downtown for three days, and then I stayed in the West, West Hollywood, right by Beverly Center for like another three days. De 14 años. De 14 años. Y estabas, wow. Con, yeah, nomás con, tenía un manager, um, and it was like this girl that was just like getting me these like jobs. It wasn't even an agent. She was from Fresno as well. Y cuando me vine para, para Los Angeles, no más me acuerdo que, you know, I just, like, opened my eyes to, like, clothing. Mm -hmm. But still, at this point, I didn't want to work in clothing. Sí. I didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, but that's what really opened my eyes to just new fashion. I remember going to Zara, and I was just, like, obsessed with it. And this was, like, me being obsessed with Zara 10 years ago, like, still not knowing shit. You know what I mean? Right, 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 right. And then I remember at this point, you know what I mean? Um, I went back to L.A. I mean, went back to Reedley, and I came back with all this clothing. And like, y todos tus amigos estaban, wow, wow ¿de dónde like, es eso? Yeah, ¿de dónde es eso? Yo me, yo me acuerdo de mis amigos encontrando, like, ya no, Zara ya Khan, no eres el, el fresa del grupo. No, 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 yeah, and by this point, I was like, I was always like a cool kid. I always liked having 
because I, I grew up kind of like an only child, my brother and sister are so much older, eight, nine years older. So it's like I had two sets of parents. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So siempre era, estaba solo, so siempre tenía mis amigos conmigo en mi casa y o jugado, estábamos jugando o haciendo algo. Y so, so cuando tenía 14 años, like I would always have parties and have my friends around and my teammates from baseball and football. But um, yeah, I was always just different. Yeah. I always dressed differently. So después de esas experiencias aquí en LA, regresaste allá, todos tus amigos estaban súper impresionados. Yeah. ¿Cómo fue tu high school? Mi high school, man, so cuando me moví para Fresno, o oh, pa, para Ridley, mi familia, you know, empezaron a, se movieron para ahí, por, ahí, ahí porque las casas estaban más baratas de donde vivían Salinas. Mm -hmm. So pueden comprar una casa más grande. Y su paso tenía una casa bien chila con pool, had a waterfall in the pool, like it was slightly out in the country, so it was like the perfect party house. Mm -hmm. Así que eso siempre es, mi, mi familia venía, los visitaban y tirábamos fiestas por, para, you know, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Año Nuevo, you know, birthdays, lo que sea. So in high school, lo, you know, hiciera lo mismo, siempre tenía mis amigos over and, um, you know, that's, I was always a natural, like, party guy. Mm -hmm. I love just having people around and organizing things and, like, planning stuff out and, and, and when we were in Fresno and really, you know, no hay nada. It's puro agriculture. No más hay files de, files, you know what I mean? The different, uh, you know, vegetables or fruit fields. And so there was nothing there. So what we'd literally do is just like when school was done and sports were done, like the weekends, like you would hang around and like drink with your friends. Right. You'd find an area in like the middle of a field where like cops can't find you. Just like throw a throw a party, like have a <laughs> gathering, you know. Sí, sí, sí. Yeah, yeah. So it's not, that's kind of what my high school was like. You know, it was cool, but um, I definitely knew, you know, la gente gente de de Ridley Fresno se quedan ahí, like sí, nunca sí. nunca se van, you know what I mean? And, y yo yo yendo a, a Los Ángeles desde 14 años, yo siempre sabía, like you know, like me quiero mover por aquí. So, ¿tú regresaste o nomás pensabas de ley de los 14? ¿O tú venías cada verano? No, 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 no nomás pensaba de la ley de los 14 años, pero a, a veces en los veranos yo venía para atrás a comprar ropa. Uh -huh. Yo me acuerdo cuando tenía 15 años, I, was, I went to my first prom, and uh -huh. I bought my prom suit from H&M, okay. <laughs> which there was no H&M in Fresno. Right. So, manejaste hasta LA yeah. para comprar eso. Con mis amigos, yeah. Sí. Y era like, wow, nosotros vamos a LA, super aventura. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It was the H&M on Sunset, on Sunset Plaza. <laughs> ok, yeah, yeah. Uh, ok, so, tú, tú acabaste <laughs> el colegio, ¿verdad? No. No. No college. Pero, no, no, la ah, secundaria. Sí. So, la secundaria, sí. Sí. So, cuando tenía 15 años, y la segunda vez que me vine para atrás a Los Ángeles, nomás sentía algo, like... And, y todavía no sabía lo que quería hacer. No, sí. no tenía carrera. Nomás sabía que, que you know, quería dinero. I was like, I need to make money. Like, being in this town. Like, you know, we've been really, like, hay nada. Nada. Like, you literally work in a packing house. Or... La finca. Or, like, yeah. Like, you, or you sell drugs. Because it's, it's, it's a big... It's the agriculture capital of California. There was so much weed growing in mm -hmm. there that you literally become a drug dealer or you go work in a packing house. Right. There's nothing else there. Sí. You know what I mean? So, no quería vender drogas porque yo mira lo que pasó con mi hermano mi hermana. Sus vidas, you know, no están tan bien. Uh -huh. So, um, you know, I chose, when I was 15, I made a decision like, you know, like, me quiero mover para Los Ángeles. Uh -huh. Y voy a ir a la escuela y voy a... <clears throat> I wanted to go to UCLA and I wanted to study to be a doctor or some type of medicine, something in the medical field, you know, typical of Mexican parents are like, you gotta be a lawyer or a doctor. Yeah, yeah, of course. Or something. You know, sí, sí, sí. Y siempre quería, quería ser un anesthesiologist porque, you know, you just like drug people, you measure out the drugs, and pero hacen mucho dinero. Sí. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, yeah, I'm gonna be an anesthesiologist, you know, hacen mucho dinero, I feel like I can do this, like I'm gonna go to school for it. Y tu padre es súper orgulloso de eso. Yeah, they're just like, yeah, do it, whatever you want, like, you know, we'll, we'll help you as much as we can. Um, but I'm not, you know, school didn't work out, obviously. Sí. Yeah. So, ¿ya te graduaste de high school? So, high school. So, me gradué cuando tenía 17 años. Okay. Um, my junior year, at the end of the junior year, I took a proficiency exam. Tomé un test. Y en, y en la primera vez lo pasé. Y el test me tomé, era como tres horas. Tres horas. Sí. Pero tres horas, you know, I was really nervous. Pero cuando lo pasas, te dan tu... Through a diploma. 
So my senior year, I had I had the choice to stay in college or stay in high school and finish out the year, or leave. I had the opportunity. So lo que he says, tenía un amigo que was going to fit him in San Francisco, un, un primo que that was going to fit him, he, and I was you know we were really close when we were young and we wanted to just like you know we both were always talking about like we both want to be in LA. He, when it happened to be when he when I was graduating high school, he wanted to transfer to LA. It was just like perfect timing. Say, I've had so many coincidences in my life that like are say, signs of happening of like reasons to do something. Say, no tenía razón para ir a Los Angeles. No tenía. I didn't even have a college. Pero siempre algo. Yet. Todo pasa por una razón. Exactly. Todo es una guía de, de tu exactly. vida. Esto pasa por esto porque Dios te quiere. Yeah. You know. No, yeah. Y, 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 había muchos muchos. Um, no, me pasó muchas veces como different coincidences that I think were reasons, you know what I mean? Y cuando tenía 17 años, me moví a downtown LA con un primo. Que ten, ten, él tenía como 21 años allá. Almost was seven years ago. He's, he's almost 30 now, yeah. Yeah, he was 22 years old. Ok, seven. so ya llegaste a LA. Llegué a LA. Estás súper, súper entusiasmado. Yeah, era como, y tenía 17 años, so, pero tenía fake ID. Porque tengo muchos primos. Sí. Y, y como mi hermano, todos los mirábamos lo mismo. So sí. me, dieron, me dieron un ID para vivir en Los Ángeles. Uh -huh. Ajá, so, 17 years old. Was... So, ¿Qué hiciste cuando llegaste acá? So, cuando llegué aquí, so, mi primo era. Él, él iba a la escuela Firam en downtown. Sí. So, para los que no saben, Firam es el uh, Fashion Institute de Design and Merchandising, que es la escuela, <coughs> una de las escuelas grandes aquí de la moda en Estados Unidos. Uh, sí donde hartos estudiantes van para estudiar la moda o el negocio de la moda. Okay, sí. sigue. Y cuando llegué, no, no, como no tenía 18 años, no podía trabajar, no podía hacer nada. So me empecé a, me encontré un acting agent y me, me pusieron a, you know, diferentes castings y, you know, I started going to castings y, you know, it was really, really exhausting, you know what I mean? But the, the, the model life, the actor life, like, es, es, es mucho, you know what I mean? It's really like a lot of no's y, Around that time, uh, mi primo estaba, he was studying uh, marketing, mm -hmm. merchandise marketing at Fidon. Y yo, y vivíamos en un studio, studio apartment, era como 500 square feet. <laughs> Chiquito el apartamento. Man. Como was, este cuarto. <laughs> no, como este cuarto, yeah. <laughs> como este cuarto. Él tenía su cama, yo tenía un futon. Uh -huh. Y ahí vivíamos, pero era en el building called the Medici, so like, it was a crazy building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Fidon had dorms in that building. Okay. So siempre había, you know, Fiesta, Fiestas, sí. mujeres, like it was like a college, like dorm room, a lot, like a, a little bit nicer though. Y yo me, yo me puse a, you know, me, I signed up for Finum because, you know, siempre miraba a mi primo haciendo sus proyectos y le empecé a ayudar mucho y ya, ya me encantaba mucho la ropa y moda y, y you know, a mi primo también en, I ended up applying for merchandise marketing. Okay. Y, y yo, yo, mi, el proyecto that they accepted was I created a brand. I created a brand and created a name for it and that was my entrance project and they took it and I got accepted to fit them. So, todavía, okay, so ya te fuiste a la escuela full time? Mm -hmm. No, okay. not full time. I te, todavía tenía un año. This was like in the first or second month that I moved to LA. Okay. Ya te, tenía un año para, para empezar porque no me dejaron empezar hasta que cumplí los 18 años. So lo que hice la primera, el, el primer, um, job que tenía en Los Ángeles era para trabajar por 424 en Fairfax. Ok, la tienda. Mm -hmm. So la tienda 424. Lo, lo que no saben, la tienda 424 mm -hmm. es una tienda grande de streetwear yeah. que está en la Fairfax, que es una de las tiendas más cool de streetwear en el mundo. Ya. Yeah. Uno de los más cool del mundo y you no know, tiene marcas como Como cositas el trabajo. Y, yeah. So, no, Ca caminaste en la tienda y dijiste, hey, quiero trabajar aquí. De veras lo que hice, uh, hice un resume. Uh -huh. Y no, no tenía nada de job history, sure. nothing. So I made a resume. I went to Fairfax because I knew Fairfax because, you know, in Fairfax, había Supreme. Había, I mean, the hundreds is really popular still. It was just seven years ago in Fairfax sí. when Fairfax was really hot. Right. Fairfax estaba tan popular. So yo fui a cada tienda, dejé un resume y les dije, yo, you know, tengo 17 años, me, me, me moví a Los, a Los Angeles. You know, I just want to intern. Like, I just want to work because I don't need any jobs. Like, I went into Supreme. 
This is like, I didn't know Supreme. Yo no conocía Supreme porque yo no me crecía Supreme. And I just walked in there like, whoa, like this store is, está bien cool. And then, sí, like, quiero sí. trabajar aquí. Y para ti era otra marca. Yeah, you know, <laughs> no, para mí nomás era otra marca porque yo no, con, yo, yo no sabía fashion o moda como you know, gente que se crecieron en Los Ángeles o Nueva York. Que, sí, por you know, son, son más, you know, just advanced in fashion or whatever. And so I went into 424. And 424 estaba bien chiquito. Really, really small room, but it was really, really cool. No más tenían como joyas y vintage clothing, but it was all black. And I actually walked in there wearing all black. I had this, like, cool bomber, like, a really cool fit on. And I had these rare Air Maxes that I was wearing. And um, I walk in, and Guillermo was sitting at the front desk. Uh -huh. I didn't know he owned the store. Uh -huh. And I just went up, asked him, like, hey, you know what I mean? Me voy a Los Angeles, estoy encontrando un job o algo que hacer. Like, si necesitan ayuda, you know, you call me. And um, he kind of interviewed me on the spot. ¿Qué te preguntó? I don't really remember. He just asked me about my schedule. Like, so how, are you free? Are you available? I literally told him, like, I don't have a job. I can't go to school for a year. Like, I can, I just want to do something in fashion. And, you, yeah. and like, I came to Fairfax because I know, like, I'm not from here. I know it's the coolest block. Y me llamaron para atrás el segundo día. Even I was working two days later. Okay, cool. La, el primer día que me fui a trabajar a 424, yo no conocía nada, nadie. I didn't know any rappers. I barely knew. Like, I just started listening to hip hop and, you know what I mean? Um, I knew, like, Wiz Khalifa and, like, some of the bigger guys, obviously. ¿Qué música tú oías en Salinas? I mean, no, en Salinas siempre... Ranchero. Siempre era... <laughs> mi familia eran tan mexicanos, like, ranchero, banda, corridos, like, you know, like, everything, bro. <laughs> everything, man. Like, my, my family is so Mexican. It's crazy. <laughs> I go home, they're like, what are you wearing? Like, sí, sí, sí. You know, ¿Quién es él? Me, me tengo que, ¿Qué te pasó? Me tengo mi que mamá? vestir diferente para ir a, para ir a mirar a mis abuelos y mis sí. primos y, y tíos. Um, pero ya, el primer día que me fui a trabajar a 424, tenían un una listening party for Iggy Azalea. Mm -hmm. When Iggy Azalea, seven years ago, her first song was coming out. And I was like, whoa, like, I have no idea who she is. But there was like 70 kids lined up outside. And I had I just started helping. I was just like the intern. I did whatever they needed help right. doing. You know what I mean? And he make a day. I was there for a good like 10, 11 months, just interning, just learning, just like you know. That's where I really, really, you know, me me You know, I saw brands like Rude launch. Mm -hmm. He came in here. I remember bringing the bandana tee in. Y yo era el que lo estaba vendiendo. Yo era yo yo miré todas las personas que vinieron a la tienda como ASAP Rocky, Travis Scott, Kendrick Lamar, Schoolboy Q, y yo, yo no sabía lo que, lo, quién era. Sí. You know what I mean? So yo nomás los ayudaba como eran otro, you know, customer, cualquier lo que persona, sea, sí. cualquier persona. Y, y por eso, por eso me, me gustaron, porque I wouldn't fan out of anybody because I wouldn't know anybody. Right. I was a kid from, from the no, middle of nowhere, you know what I mean? Right. And so, um, allí, allí, you know, I learned really the ins and outs of, running a retail store, but also, like, I learned hype. Sí, you know, más importante. Stamped. We launched their hats there. Stamp launched hats there. Ruigi launches bandana tea there. Jerry Lorenzo would start coming around there. Like, all these people that are doing huge things today, I met there when I was 17. Sí. <clears throat> Some of them still remember me, which is crazy. Seven years ago, they're like, wow. Like, you can't... 424 kid, yeah. Yeah. I so, was the intern at 424. Yeah. So, ¿tú trabajaste ahí por 10, 11 meses y después qué? So, cumplí los 18 años y luego, you know, mis papás dejé la escuela. So, fit em. I started going to fit em when I was about 17 and a half. Y siempre me dijo, like, si te quedas en la escuela, te voy a ayudar. Te voy a, you know, no tienes que trabajar. You, you can just do what you need to do, learn. Um, you know, él quería que yo, él, mis, mis papás sabían que yo era diferente de mi hermano a mi hermana. You know what I mean? No más como estaba cuando era niño, you know, I was always a lot really observant, like, you know, they can just tell I was different. So, um, the second I, I, I wouldn't fit on for like six months and, you know, I liked it, but I was really like, I just, I didn't, I didn't really understand some of my teachers, you know, like I was learning from people that failed in fashion. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. No, I get it. Yeah. And so I was like, like, this can't be possible. Like, I can't be learning from people that failed in fashion. And at the time, I was going to 424. <clears throat> and I would see all these brands. I, I was, like, around all these brands. Like, Sir, remember Sir? Mm -hmm. Calm the fuck down. I saw that go from, I saw ASAP Rocky wear that. 
and then boom, like the store would go crazy because it was the only place you can buy the calm the fuck down hat in LA. So I was learning this and seeing this, not even realizing like what was happening until like really like thinking about it. You know what I mean? Like, whoa, like the strategy that all these brands are are going through, like it's crazy. You know what I mean? How they're growing. Right. And so La Escuela the Hype, four to four. Yeah, so the Hela Escuela. The Hela Escuela porque you know everything was really dated. The PR, like they didn't even have a PR course. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to do, is like I want to do PR. Yeah. You know what I mean, I wanna like I wanna be the one connecting celebrities with the brands. Mm -hmm. But they didn't even offer that at the time. So the Hela Escuela y no le dije mis papás. You know, les eché mentiras por como tres tres meses. <laughs> until my mom got a call one day that like I wasn't showing up to school. I just stopped showing up, literally. And, like, it was, like, I had a, I have loans still I'm paying off <laughs> seven years right, later. Right, right, right. Um, y, you know, I stayed at 424, y 424 todavía era una tienda muy chica. Y, you know, you know, I had to, about after being there for, like, a year, I had to leave and just start working. So I started working on these random retail jobs. Okay. Mi primer trabajo después de 424 fue a Hollywood Boulevard, porque me fui a trabajar a Hollywood Boulevard porque vivía en downtown LA. No tenía carro. No tenía licencia. Tenía licencia, pero no tenía carro, pero no había Uber o nada. Sí. Nomás podía, you know, I would travel with the train. Uh -huh. So the downtown train would take you to Hollywood and Highland in 15 minutes. So I found a job there at Aldo. Okay. <laughs> okay. So agarré un trabajo en Aldo y yo me acuerdo que el, el primer día, no, la segunda, el segun, the second day that I, I was there working, I got fired. Because uh -huh. I showed up late. <laughs> y que hiciste? I went across the street and I uh, I got I applied at Zara. <laughs> <laughs> okay, y conseguiste ese trabajo. <laughs> y me quedé en Zara por como unos uh, unos seis meses. Uh -huh. But around this time, um, tenía una novia that she was she was like four years older than me, just a girl I met, and she had a magazine, una magazine, una revista que se llamaba Annex Magazine. Uh -huh. Y cuando empecé a ayudar con Alex Magazine, you know, siempre estaba con ella, con mis amigos, y she was a stylist, and her best friend was a stylist, and they were both really creative people, and, you know, neces necesitaba una ayuda con esa, esa revista, you know, yo tenía mucho tiempo, porque además estaba trabajando y Zara, ya no estaba en la escuela, y quería hacer algo como en moda, todavía, <clears throat> that didn't take too much time, I'm like, I, you know, I wanted to keep working at 424, but I just, I couldn't be there full time, and like, you know, I had to like really start making money, yeah, to like survive in LA, at this point, I was like in full entrepreneur mode, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I need to make money somehow, um, and so we started, I started working for the magazine, and, uh, uh and the magazine was really cool, you know, estaban, you know, estaban, you know, they were shooting people like young Hollywood stars, like, Drake Bell, Bella Thorne, like it was very a Hollywood magazine, mm -hmm. and I was doing all the PR for it. Like I just started finding brands on the internet. This was like when Instagram first first launched, like five years ago. Yeah, around there. It launched six years ago, but when it started getting hype, was hype five years it was ago. Like five years ago. Yeah, four or so, five years ago. So on Instagram, I my job was to go and find brands and reach out to them to send us clothing to style the shoots that we're doing. And we're shooting pretty cool people at this yeah. point. We're creating really cool content. And um, so this is my first entry, entry like level, you know, fashion experience and really creating content and working in marketing and, <clears throat> and, and packaging. You know what I mean? Y lo que hacíamos es, ellos todavía están en la escuela. Ellos fueron a FITM. That's where I met them. But I dropped out. They were already graduating. Los de la revista. Hmm? Yeah. yeah. Los de la revista. Ellos, ellos ya, ya se iban a graduar y Annex Magazine era su proyecto para graduar de, de FITM. Okay. Y they were graduating. When they were graduating, I was, I was like, they're, they're leaving. Like, I'm just going to drop out and work on this magazine with them. Yeah. Porque eh, la revista tenía como, salían con, una, ah, con uno, algo nuevo como every quarter, every three months. Uh -huh. Y la revista graba como... 25 to 50,000 views online because we were shoot we would shoot with like celebrities that had like really big following on Instagram when Instagram first first started like, right you know what I mean and so that was like my next like big thing that I started working on after 424 okay it was super cool yeah and what did you learn for how long? two years two years and what did you learn during that time? I learned a lot I had 18 years I had 18 years and Empezamos a tirar fiestas con Annex Magazine, you know, diferentes hoteles. Lo que hacíamos, porque teníamos celebrities, pero no teníamos dinero, no teníamos nada de dinero. 
lo que hacíamos por, con, con la revista, y, <clears throat> we, would, we would reach out to hotels and tell them that we'll do a photo shoot in their hotel in return for putting an ad of the hotel in the magazine. So we were getting these like free hotel rooms to do photo shoots in, and that turned into us throwing parties, y, you know, yo, y, y yo estaba organizando estas fiestas por la revista, y gente que, you know, all the people we worked with, like stylists, the brands, the designers, the, you know, the different graphic designers, we just started throwing these, like, magazine release parties. Mm -hmm. y, las, y las fiestas, se, you know, they got really, really big after a couple parties because all the celebrities we'd shoot with in the magazine They'd come to would the party. come to the party. Right. And then at that point, we started making money off the parties and uh, we were just figuring out so many ways to make money. And the parties were, like, a really big way. Because we would get the venues for free. Right. And then brands would want to sponsor the party. And then in alcohol brands. And it was like my first... I really was learning like corporate sponsorship. Mm -hmm. On like a whim. So, okay. Y, y por ejemplo, ¿cuál, cuál compañía tú trabajas con para las fiestas? Para las fiestas. Como yo, yo tiré fiestas en uh, Zapata Hotel. I threw multiple parties at the Mondrian. Sky Bar Mondrian. Como tres o cuatro fiestas. This was like four years ago. Five years ago. Right before Lush. I was working, you know, really working hard on the next magazine, you know, and um, in di different clubs también, you know what I mean? Like, yo me acuerdo tirando una fiesta en Emerson Club, when Emerson is really popular. Um, I did a party at Henry's, Hooray Henry's once, when it was before it, it, it was Peppermint. Peppermint Club. So we were throwing parties everywhere, and we'd have all these Hollywood stars that um, we were creating content for and putting together. And the magazine, by the way, as well, it was never print. It was all online. All online. But the, the way we'd put it together and package it, we'd package it like a print magazine. And, but it was all digital. ¿Y por qué es eso? Para que la gente sabían, you know, pensaban, and they would have get the perception that it was bigger than what it was. Okay. So we would, so we, you know, because digital... So el, so el magazine online salía cada tres meses. Cada tres meses. Y tenía la... Per, pero, okay, so no había contenido todos los días o nada de eso. Había nomás... Todos los días nomás era Instagram. Okay. Nomás Instagram poníamos diferentes fotos. Y el hype era cada tres meses. Y luego, luego el website también. En el website pusimos como you know, diferentes historias de, de moda o, o lo que sea. Like, it was a full blog we were running. Yeah. Annex Magazine, you know what I mean? At the peak, peak of it, you know, we, we did this magazine cover with, um, we did a magazine cover with Sierra. Mm -hmm. And the magazine broke like half a million views digitally. Right. And the website, and it really cracked. And at that point, like all these PR companies all these different PR companies would start reaching out to us, emailing us, like, hey, pitching us talent, sending us, like, all these, like, C and B-level actors to, like, be in the magazine and <laughs> all these newer artists. And so <clears throat> by that point, it was, like, running on its own. We just had to, like, you know, it was my job to, and, I, and you know, it was my job to just find brands, find sí. brands, sponsorships, and then obviously pick the best celebrities for every single magazine. So, y, okay, so, ¿tú viste ahí por cuántos años? Dos por años. Dos, dos años, sí. Y en ese, en, ese, en ese tiempo, no tenía 21 años, pero yo estaba tirando las fiestas. I was getting in all these clubs and throwing parties everywhere. Sí. Nobody had, I'd always lied about my age for like literally till I turned 22 years old. I lied about my age. <laughs> yeah, because like if everybody knew I was 18 years old doing this, they'd be like, you're crazy. Like, you know what I mean? Right, right, right. No entiendo. Yeah. Okay, so, después, okay, so, ¿a, a qué año te paraste con, con NX? So, me paré con NX cuando tenía... No me acuerdo el año, pero tenía como 20 años. Ok. 20 años, and I was about to be 21. Y, pero cuando estaba con Alex Magazine, yo miraba como, en Los Ángeles no había showrooms. No, todos los showrooms eran de mujeres. Sí. Era de como, y los showrooms que tenían ropa, ropa de hombres, nomás era como suiting or really like Americana, like J. Crew-ish type Nada showrooms. como de streetwear. Nada de streetwear. Y, y en estos años, como compañías como... Like Rude, I remember like Brian Lichtenberg, like Fear of God, like all these guys were just getting started and there was no showroom that had these cool menswear brands. And I, I knew this because we would shoot every month. Cada mes, hacíamos como tres diferentes photo shoots. Y mm -hmm. dos de los tres, o you know, era mucho con, cuando necesitábamos ropa de hombre. So estábamos gastando mucho dinero comprando ropa o pagando por shipping para ropa que te venía de Nueva York, de Europa, lo que sea. Y es cuando tenía la idea de Lush Network, porque Lush Network is a men's showroom in L.A. for stylists to come and pull, you know, cool, you know, luxury streetwear or contemporary brands that are menswear. So this is when the idea came into mind. I was like 19 years old, but I never, you know, I was like, I mean, there needs to be a men's showroom in L.A. There's no yeah. men's showrooms. 
So yeah, you know, two, three years down the road, I've been doing Annex Magazine. You know, revistas no hacen mucho dinero. No. Really, really cool shit. You do amazing stuff. We were getting invited places. We were, you know, really living like the like influencer lifestyle early on. But no, no teníamos mucho dinero. Sí. Y, you know, we were still, I was struggling. At this point, I remember we, all, everybody from the magazine was living. We were all living together. <laughs> I, I was living in like a box. Right. Yeah. I lived over by like MacArthur Park in this like old Victorian home. It was like a three bedroom that was like literally fifteen hundred dollars a month. <laughs> there was like cockroaches in it, like it was trash. And I was living with the with the girl I was dating who owned the magazine. We were sharing a room. We we each paid two fifty a month. <laughs> okay, so yeah, ya paraste con con el magazine en un punto. Yeah. ¿Qué qué 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 hiciste próximo? So, cuando paré con la, con la revista, yo me acuerdo que tenía la idea del, del showroom, de men, uh, the men's showroom. Y había una, una compañía que encontré cuando estaba trabajando con la revista. Se llamaba Laura Eyewear. It was a cool eyewear brand. Y <clears throat> yo me acuerdo que cuando la revista, ya yeah, yeah, was like phasing out. Like nobody was like really like able to keep up with it anymore because we all just like weren't making enough money. Mm -hmm. uh, we left and I left and I... Actually, my f I, I pitched the guy that owned the sunglass brand, like, hey, like, I, he was doing it by himself. Estaba solo. Y no sabía nada. Nomás sabía cómo hacer los lentes, pero no sabía cómo, you know, how to market them, you know, how to grow a brand. Not that I knew either, but I pretty much told him, like, yo, I can help you with your brand. Like, I know a lot of celebrities, know a lot of stylists. I can get on a lot of people. And so I remember my first ever job. I was like, cool. Um, the magazine was dying out. This guy Gavin with Laura, which Laura did good for like a good year and a half, actually. It was my first ever project working on a brand. It was mm -hmm. me and Gavin. He, I think he was paying me like fucking peanuts, like a thousand dollars a month. Okay. And um, I took on that that project. And uh, with this project, I left the magazine and he opened up like a small show, a small office in downtown. Y todo vivía en downtown LA. Siempre vivía en downtown LA. Um, I started working on the sunglass brand and I started, you know creating ideas for the first photo shoots and, you know, putting a list of different celebrities and like influencers on Instagram together that we should be sending sunglasses to, you know, to help us, you know, we had no money for marketing. No teníamos dinero. So tenía que, tenía que, tenía que, you know, how to create ideas for how to grow a brand with no money. So what do you do? You see people, you see celebrities. Sí. You, you have, give Y tú conocías todos los celebrities probablemente de 424. 424 y, y, y luego de trabajando la, con la, la revista. Magazine, sí. y, so, y las ten... fiestas. Yeah, y, y las fiestas. Y en las fiestas conocía a todos los amigos que tengo ahora. En, en, en fashion, con Matt Bad Boy. I met yeah. him. He came to a party. Annex Magazine party. I met him. And so all these people would come to my parties because it was like a really cool like industry party. Mm -hmm. And all the kids from Fitum, because all of us were Fitum kids, todos los amigos de Fitton vinieron a las fiestas. Okay. You know, so we were really cool in college. When I, I only went for a year, I dropped right. out, but <laughs> we were so cool. Yeah. But the dropout rate at Fitton, just so you know, 70% of people drop off. At Fitton? Yeah. Shit. Because it's, it's in LA and people just sí, get, a, get an opportunity. Trabajo, oportunidad. They don't know, no, no, oportunidad y se, se van, you know what I mean? Sí. Okay, so, trabajaste en la marca por año y medio? Y como, durante ese tiempo conseguiste otros clientes yeah, o qué? Yeah, so empecé, so, you know, empecé con, con la, la marca de lentes y yo usaba los lentes como dinero. So instead of paying people, les di a los lentes, estaban, you know, they were like three, four hundred dollars, sunglasses, okay. made in Italy. Uh, y les di, les di a lentes y luego... ¿Y tú hacías nomás el marketing o las ventas también? Uh, marketing. Marketing, okay. All marketing. Nomás eran nosotros dos, so yo hacía todo. A, you know, hablaba tiendas a veces, like, oh, this store is cool, like, I, me puse a hablar las tiendas y... You know, cuando encontraba a alguien en Instagram, I'll just DM them, you know, I'll send them the, the, the sunglasses, and people love the sunglasses because they were like, they were some really expensive sunglasses. Pero todo el dinero que teníamos lo estábamos usando en haciendo más lentes. No teníamos dinero para pagar o hacer nada. So I was running really, really bootleg, really shoestring budget. Pero de allí, you know, conocía mucha gente. You know, we got people like Haley Baldwin wearing the sunglasses. You know, like I would literally find stylists on Instagram or like in magazines and just DM them and send them sunglasses. And so this is where I first met like a lot of the people I still work with today, a lot of the big stylists, like, you know, I was just sending them sunglasses and I was like the sunglass guy. <laughs> Pero de aquí encontré la marca Represent. Represent, era, era, this was four or five years ago. Um, 
Yo, los, lo, yo, yo, yo siempre estaba en hype piece. Cada, cada día, you know, I was always obsessed with fashion, menswear. I would like study it like, like no other, you know what I mean? So I'd go on hype piece and high body and complex and just look up brands, see what they were doing and create ideas for like the campaigns and how we should be shooting Lura. And I found Represent. Represent, it was their first, I didn't even know this, but it was, era la primera vez que, que se, um, tenían una, una revista en, en hype beast online. And I was like, whoa, like, this brand is, is, is perfect. It's perfect for us. Like, we should do a collaboration with them. So, let's mandé un email, I represent, to their info, I represent.com. Mm -hmm. Email, y, you know, they got back to me a day later. Y we were talking about a collaboration right away. ¿Y esa marca está basada donde? La marca nomás estaba, nomás estaba online. ¿Está en LA? No, la, esa, esa marca son, son de Manchester. Okay. Yeah, de Inglaterra. Son de Manchester y so yo me acuerdo hablando con ellos y luego me, you know, me, me mandaron ropa no más para tener yo y lo yo son nosotros les, les mandamos lentes and we started designing a collaboration right away y de, de allí I was like yo like this brand would be good to start the showroom with I still had the idea for the showroom like there needs to be a men's showroom like I really want to do it I, I, was, I was always just like you know really thinking about it but I didn't, I didn't know how to start and didn't have any money to do it you know what I mean yeah So yo me acuerdo que empecé con Represent y les dije, like, oh, wow, like, yo, porque yo le estaba mandando lentes a todos. Tenía un, un music video de Chris Brown y le estaba mandando lentes. So yo le dije a Represent, like, yo, like, mándame ropa, lo voy a dar a Chris Brown. So me mandaron la ropa, como seis, siete diferentes, uh, you know, pieces from their collection. Y lo mandé a Chris Brown y Chris Brown, you know, wore it all over the video shoot. And that was, and I, uh, uh, it was, and Represent was really, really popular. It's still popular, but it was new to LA. So all the stylists were like, I love this brand. They had really cool jeans and the silhouettes. It was really, really different. It was an affordable version of your like Balmain or John mm -hmm. Elliott or, or Fear of God or lo que sea. But oh, Fear of God, no le estaba viendo nadie, ropa a nadie, no lo que sea. So I was sending Represent. I just started sending Represent to everybody. All the stylists I worked with, I was like, yeah, you need to, know, you need to talk, work with this brand. Like they're super hot. So, no más gratis, no lo estaban, I wasn't charging them anything. Sí. I was just like, yo, send me clothing, I'm going to get on these people, and con so eso y, empecé a, you know. So, ya con esa marca tú lanzaste Slush. Yeah, so, y luego como de, ya, ya pasó como unos dos, tres meses, you know, I got represent on, like, Chris Brown, Tyga, like, Post Malone, like, and um, at this point, I remember I told represent one day, I was like, yo, send me your whole collection, I want to open a showroom. Um, you guys will be the first brand with the sunglass brand, Laura. And I had two other smaller brands that I put together. And all of the brands together, I remember they paid me like nothing. They paid me like five, six hundred dollars a month. Uh -huh. <laughs> nothing. I was just taking anything. I was like, I need to open the showroom though. Yeah. And so with Laura, the sunglass brand, and I had another friend who was a videographer. We all three went together on a space. Space I have now. Mm -hmm. We all split the rent and I opened the showroom and I had one corner with my four brands. The other corner era la marca Laura. Luego la otra esquina era un photo studio. Que mi amigo, el otro amigo, he was doing his videos and his photos out of there. And that's how Lush started. Okay. As a very small showroom. Y and, um, eso era cuántos años pasado? Like three and a half, four years ago. Okay. Y, okay, so, ¿cuál es tu próximo step grande? Con... So, de, so de allí, you know, yo me acuerdo, lo, lo, lo que hacía yo es, yo encontré marcas de Europa, de, 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 de Asia, y yo traía la, la, la ropa de Los Ángeles. So todos los styles y la, la, you know, los, los celebrities que conocía, yo les estaba, you know, I was introducing them to new brands, something new, que you know, nadie, nadie lo tenía. And um, it started very, very small with Re Represent, but slowly it just started growing. Y, y cuando tú ves una marca, ¿qué es lo que tú ves? Para, para decir, yo quiero trabajar con esa marca. O viceversa. You know, I was always very, very picky. Like, I have, like, a... I can't even explain, honestly. Nomás yo sabía lo que yo quería, pero to, todo lo que tenía era... It was definitely cool. Like, I tried creating a store with my showroom. I didn't have any brands that looked too much alike. And I, and, not, and I didn't know this, but Represent was very a very trend-setting brand at the time. So, but I just happened to like them and they became the first brand I had. And because of Represent, I was able to bring in other really cool brands because they were always like, you know, siempre estaban en Hype Beast y Heist and Bite y todas las revistas lo, estaban, lo, lo tenían y celebrities were wearing it. So it got me really, um, and they would always post me and they're really big on Instagram, always early on, really early on. 
Ok, so después de ese tiempo, ¿cuál era tu próxima marca que... So, Consiste. tenía represent, tenía Allura todavía, um, salimos con el, con el collaboration that I started with, you know, did it really well. Y luego la, la otra marca, I mean, me quedé con represent por como unos, todavía trabajan conmigo ahora, four years later, I'm still with them today. Um, pero la otra marca, no, te, siempre tenía diferentes marcas que estaban en el showroom, pero la marca después esa que estaba, you know, like muy popular es C2H4. Uh -huh. No se represent, encontré C2H4. Y en ese tiempo tenía Represent, C2H4, la marca de los lentes, tenía como otras tres marcas, bien chicas, en, en el showroom. Pero el showroom estaba creciendo y creciendo. Y más y más stylists y celebrities y, you know, management teams me encontraron porque, you know, gente en Los Ángeles, to, todos, son, todos son amigos, todos hablan y yo les estaba dando ropa gratis a todos. Y, you know, I would trade them, be like, yo, like, send me a photo or post on Instagram and I'll give you, like, free Represent or vice versa. Y en ese tiempo, you know, tenía, estaba haciendo dinero, pero no estaba haciendo mucho dinero. Todavía estaba, you know, I was really, I was poor, still struggling, spending everything on the showroom, buying racks and building out the space and, you know what I mean, like, just living really, really, like, check to check, like, barely <laughs> making ends meet. You know, at this point, I was living with, I was, I started working with, uh, with the photographer, Bad Boy. Mm -hmm. Era mi buen amigo, Matt. You know, él, él, él era un fotógrafo, you know, empezó en Instagram y Hypebeast empezó a uh, usar sus fotos. He would shoot all these girls and Hypebeast started reposting his photos and I remember Matt, he needed a place to live. And so I told him, just crash with me for like a little bit. He was always traveling and moving around as a photographer. And when I first started, when we had Lush going for the first year, he was always in my studio shooting, 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 shooting. And um, at this point, like we, me, him, and this, and you know, like the ex girl I used to have, like, we all lived together. Vivíamos juntos los tres en un apartamento. Teníamos él estaba en el living room, <laughs> me and him in the, me and him in the, in one room, and we were just like sucking it out. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I was like struggling like, ball. <laughs> yeah, like I couldn't, like you know, I, I, I tried working like regular jobs, and you know what I mean. Like I tried like doing all these retail things and it didn't work out but i knew lush like was something it was gonna work out it wasn't making money yet but the the brand and the network was growing like crazy to having it you know what i mean it gone gone bad boy gone, you know we started making more money when uh, me and him would start collaborating and creating photo shoot ideas for represent so their first ever their first like, real campaign shoots we were we would pitch them ideas And um, and when they liked it, you know, they'd be like, yeah, like let's do this photo shoot. Then they'd send us the clothing, they'd pay us, and we'd cast the we'd cast the model, source the location, and they, you know. And in in ese tiempo, this was like a year into Lush. In ese tiempo, the photo shoots we were creating were like getting featured everywhere. Hype Beast would start featuring it for free. Heist and Bidey. And I remember like it'd be crazy on the Instagram. And we went to like Antelope Canyon once. You know, what I mean, we got a. I found I got a permit to shoot in Antelope Canyon. Y si te conoces, si conoces Anilo Canyon, it's on an Indian reservation in Arizona. So tenía que encontrar the Indian reservation and get a permit with them to shoot. Mm -hmm. Que es difícil. Yeah, no, es muy difícil, muy difícil, pero queríamos, queríamos hacer algo diferente. You know, todas las marcas de, de hombres estaban haciendo lo mismo. Estaban, you know, they were doing photo shoots in studios. Like, all look the same, you know what I mean? So we were finding these crazy, the craziest locations you can think of. And you know what I mean? And, Antelope Canyon was, we had this idea to shoot like on Mars and the closest thing to Mars was Antelope Canyon. And we did it and we pulled it off. And I remember seeing like people would send me f those photos and like other people's treatments and mood boards for their, for their brands and stuff. So me and Bad Boy were doing really, really cool shit, you know, creating content for, started Represent and from Represent, a bunch of different brands started hitting us up to do photos. Okay, y cuántos años ya estás en Lush en este? En Lush ya estoy como un dos años, and you know, and I started managing Bad Boy. Just I was his best friend, you know. El el necesitaba ayuda con con uh, you know just negotiating with the different brands. So yo empecé a uh, you know just managing him, getting him different deals to shoot with different brands. Represent was our main client, so we do a photo shoot for them every other month. Got it. And, you know, I mean, at this point, a lot of brands would follow represent. So all these other men's brands started hitting us up. Y, y ayudó a crecer Lush Network porque las, todo, todo el content que estábamos saliendo, like, you know, it was really, really dope shit, really, really cool stuff. Sí. The lookbooks were always on fire. You know, if you remember, I don't know if you ever remember ever seen any of these represent lookbooks. I've seen a few. Yeah. 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 So we created They're all sick. those ideas. Those songs super chill. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Y este punto, como cuando tú estás yendo en, en concepto como de tus photoshoots y yeah. todo eso, ¿cuál 
como, ¿cuál es tu proceso creativo que tú te pones en cuando estás pensando, hey, quiero hacer un photoshoot en una reservación india? Uh -huh. ¿Qué te va por tu mente? Siempre empezamos con, no, obviamente, like, what inspired the collection? You know, ¿qué, ¿Qué idea tenía el designer para cuando, cuando, you know, when they were working and designing the collection? Y luego de ahí, miramos como había high PC, high snobiety, like, it was like the goal. Like, todos, cada, cada marca de, de hombres, you know, querían, if you made it to high piece, like, it's like, it was like the, a big thing for you. So we would go on high piece, y mirábamos lo que hacían todos. Y we would really put ideas together para hacer, como, like, how can we make myself, ourselves different from everybody? Y so mirábamos lo que hacían todos, y queríamos hacer algo diferente. Y lo que era diferente es encontrar todos estos, you know, different locations in L.A. and California. Como yo vivía en diferentes partes de California, yo miré mucho. De donde, you know, driving to L.A., I'd always find these really... I'd drive home to see my parents in Fresno. Como cada, como cada dos, tres meses. Y siempre pasaba por diferentes áreas que son just really, really cool. You know what I mean? Like, sí. really cool backgrounds, like the mountains. And, you know what I mean? The second big photo shoot we did for Represent was... Um, it was driving from L.A. to Lake Tahoe. There's this one random place that has a huge... It has literally red sand. Burgundy red sand. And so what we did was um, this photo, we, we sourced this location. It was literally a 90-minute drive from L.A. Y, y yo, yo en ese tiempo estaba amigos con, uh, con el, el modelo Sean Ross, the albino model. Mm -hmm. And we thought shooting Sean Ross in, in red sand, in, red sand sí. in a red mountain would be like crazy. Yeah, I mean, like crazy. It literally looked like another planet. And so at this point, um, we pitched the idea to represent, and they're like, yeah, you know, they trusted us, they sent us money, we went to the car, we paid Sean Ross, and we drove two hours away to this crazy location, you know what I mean? And uh, we always just tried being different, and that photo shoot really made it everywhere. It was like one of the most viewed content, or posts on Hypebeast that week. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, y, okay, so, ahora, esos que, como hace dos, tres años? Yeah, como dos, tres años, yeah, ya tenía como... Como un año y medio trabajando con Lush y, you know, en ese tiempo estamos haciendo dinero, pero no mucho dinero y en ese tiempo tenía la idea, I was like, you know, how do I make more money working with brands? Like, conocía todas estas marcas y, you know, pero las marcas que, que, que me gustaron, you know, no, no tenían mucho dinero. Sí. Represent, I was making money, but like, they couldn't afford like a lot you know, to pay me a full salary. Mm -hmm. Y so, you know, yo y Bad Boy los sentábamos y we'd create ideas like, dude, how do we make more money? Like, we can't we can't, like, be normal, you know what I mean? Like, we're doing such cool shit. Right. You know what I mean? And <clears throat> at this point, we, um, is when I had the idea to, because represent, because it was getting so popular, they were getting hit up so much by retailers. Tiendas estaban mandando mensajes. Ellos nomás estaban vendiendo en internet. Just nomás en, en, en el uh, internet. Y la razón que yo estaba muy, muy cerca con represent es porque los, los dueños son, son de mi edad. Mm -hmm. Really, really young guys. 24, 25 years old, I'm 24 right now. And so at this point, you know what I mean? Todos nosotros estamos learning, you know, we were learning at the same time about how to run a brand. But it was growing so fast that like nobody, nobody really knew what to do. We were learning as we were going. Y con lo que empezó a representar un día me dijo like, yo, like, todas estas tiendas de Los Ángeles y Nueva York y los Estados Unidos me lo están mandando mensaje para, porque quieren comprar la ropa, pero... Nosotros no estamos aquí. Like, los puedes ayudar? Can you just, like, talk to them? Like, deal with them? And so I was like, yeah, sure. So I'd start talking to all these stores. They would forward me the emails. And it was like, all these retailers, like, hey, you know, queremos a comprar represent, lo queremos en la tienda, blah, blah, blah. And so, you know, on on the whim, you know, we just started creating, like, sales. And I started selling the brand of stores and managing the relationships. Y rápido, rápido, era como 10, 12, 20 tiendas. And, like, a matter of a couple months. Because it was so big online, and Hypebeast was the only way to find new brands. Right. And represent was under every other month. Just crazy. So. Y este punto, tú tienes cuántas marcas en, en, en este punto tenía como, to, todavía como cuatro o cinco marcas. Y estás ya vendiendo todas la, las marcas también, no, ¿o no? No, no más em, Represent. Empezó con Represent. Porque Represent era, era la única marca que, you know, yo, yo no conocía las tiendas. Yo, yo, yo nomás conocía, you know, nomás, I was always like, really smart. Super I just, cool tiendas. I, ju I just created ideas for how to grow the brand and marketing and content and seating, you know. Yo, yo conocía celebrities y stylists y, you know, y, y como hacer different, diferentes photo shoots and different, you know, I was, I was like a creative marketer. Sí. You know what I mean? Pero no conocía tiendas. 
pero cuando empezó con Represent y me estaban mandando los mensajes, los mensajes de tiendas que quieren, you know, uh, uh, trabajar con ellos, es cuando tenía la idea, like, wow, like, puedo hacer mucho dinero así. Like, they were just giving me a, a commission of 10%. Right. And I was like, you know, started making money doing wholesale and I was like, wow, like, this is, I think this is a way for me to grow the, grow what I'm doing. Like, sí. start doing sales for all these brands and all the brands, that's how they can pay me more. Mm -hmm. so it was like you know what I mean and I started doing a lot more research and, 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 and I was like yeah I gotta do it like this is like the way I gotta find a sales rep that knows stores or that can just manage this y en este tiempo tenía como 20 tiendas y lo que hacía y encontraba más tiendas y I would go on other websites on all, a lot of times other brands like Stamped y marcas como John Elliott tenían todas las tiendas en su website donde venden sí so, look, y en ese tiempo eh, eh, estaba muy muy fácil para encontrar las tiendas por el internet sí. por Instagram las mira tiendas. hasta hoy día hasta más fácil hoy día yeah pero, pero era antes you know 10 years ago cuando, cuando you know, gente hacían diferentes uh, marcas tenían que ir a trade shows sí. para encontrar tiendas you had to go to Magic you had to go to Agenda pero con, cuando tenía, yo tenía la marca Represent, and, all the, and I would just research online different stores and different stores. Ahora está, 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 boom. Boom. Aquí está el correo. Find the emails, find the numbers, and we were just cold calling people, sending them Represent, and they're like, oh yeah, like I know this brand, or I'm familiar, the denim was on, you know, on point. And so, um, alguien, tenía un amigo, yo me acuerdo, tenía un amigo, uh, y era, él, él me conectó con my business partner today, John Baldwin, y John estaba en Nueva York doing sales pero él tenía las, él, él tenía marcas como que estaban como en Paxson y Zoomies y you know very Urban like Outfitters, market, like Urban yeah. Outfitters type brands y, y, y él, él conoció a Represent y yo le dije like yo like I got Represent um, I think you should like come to LA or just if you have any stores for me like you know like si me puedes ayudar you know te pago y you know like we can do this like I'm looking for a sales rep and the brand's really popular like we have to move on it now eh, en ese tiempo me empezó a ayudar y en como tres meses represent was like zero to like 50 stores we had like 50 stores for the brand and we were just growing and growing and growing and y en ese tiempo you know John se movió para Los Angeles nomás para you know just to meet me y nunca se fue para atrás a Nueva York se quedó <laughs> se quedó yeah y cu cuántos años son socios ya yeah? ya yeah, es como dos años dos años mm -hmm. y ya tienen cu cuántas marcas ahí en Lush Network ahorita tenemos como ocho marcas, pero las marcas como cada año we would always like improve and improve and get more brands, pero nunca teníamos mucho, like siempre, hay, hay muchas marcas que querían trabajar con nosotros, pero we wouldn't just take any deal, we wouldn't just take any brand, like sí. I was very, very particular in the type of brands I work with. ¿Y ven en ropa de hombre y de mujer o nomás de hombre? Nomás de hombre. Nomás de hombre. Nomás de hombre. Y so, y, y empezamos con Represent, luego de Represent, you know, the second brand was C2H4. C2H4, you know, era muy popular también y creció en el internet. Sí, you know, mucha gente lo, lo gustaron la marca. So that one's all, another one that did really good. And we still have today. Sí. Yeah. ¿Y cuáles son las marcas que tienen hoy día? So, bueno, ahorita tenemos las marcas um, C2H4, que es de Shanghai. Tenemos Helly de Mio, de Copenhagen. Una marca que se llama Pawaka de Lentes, que es de Berlín. Um, una marca que se llama, let's see, we have EcoSafe from Paris, otra que se llama Drolla de Monsieur from Paris, um, una marca que se llama For Those Who Sin, que es de Los Ángeles. So ya como ya pasado unos, estamos, we've been in business for three, going on four years now. Ok. Mm -hmm. Y cómo se ha evolucionado como el negocio desde que comenzaste hasta ahora? Porque obvio comenzaste como marketing agency, ahora es sales y marketing agency. Y nomás, nomás, you know, comenzó con, yo, era yo solo, nomás tenía diferentes ideas y como, I would do so much research on the market and on brands and menswear and I became really like obsessed with menswear and what men's brands were doing. Porque la ropa, la ropa que, you know, que tenemos ahora de, de, de hombres es muy diferente de lo, de lo que había, you know, you know antes. Sí. You know, it's very advanced. I feel like men are now wearing... Um, are experimenting more with clothing. Sí, sí, sí. You know porque I mean? ahora es más fácil porque... Yeah, con el internet y todo, you know what I mean? Like, I, like, como mm -hmm. dije, como cuando yo me crecí, nomás que sabíamos, you know, lo, lo que tenía el local mall, las, las marcas de ahí. Y even then, we didn't even really know brands. We would just buy whatever was there. What we needed, we needed right. jeans, shirts, whatever. Y so... Um, I lost my train of thought where we were going. No, de... Que cómo oh, se evolucionó, evolution, yeah. you know. 
Yeah, so yeah, that yeah, ahorita, you know, it, it really evolved into before we were just helping young designers grow their brand by seeding, you know, as you know, different discourses and marketing, and we'll, we'll give clothing to celebrities and do like PR and, you know, I'd get brands featured on Hypebeast, Heist Fighting. Como trabajando con Represent y con todas estas marcas, siempre tenía marcas que se querían, you know, super cool. So, you know, diferentes revistas como Hypey, Size and Body, Complex, GQ, um, you know, nomás les mandaba mensajes por Instagram, o les mandaba mensajes por email, or just try to find their email somewhere, and they liked my brands. So they started really, you know, I started building relationships with all these people in menswear, Hypey, Size and Body, stores, you know what I mean, different stylists, and so... After two years of really doing this full time and focusing on it, um, you know, by our third year is where things really, really popped off. Sí. You know what I mean? Y ahora cuando tú, cuando tú buscas una marca, ¿qué es lo que tú buscas que tiene esa marca especial para ti? Tien, tiene Porque obvio, tener... maybe en principio estabas nomás tomando lo que, whatever, lo que yeah. estaba medio cool, yeah. pero ahora ya tienes, ya estás en posición donde tú puedes escoger lo que con quien tú trabajas y con quien tú no trabajas. Las marcas tienen que tener algo, algo diferente. You know what I mean? Hay muchas marcas ahorita que se miran igual. Se miran igual. You know what I mean? I, ten, tienen que tener un real designer. You know what I mean? Ahora, como no es como antes, como cualquier persona puede ir a, y hacer ropa. You no know, todos pueden hacer ropa. You can go to downtown LA and you can take, uh, you know, your favorite pair of jeans and jackets and go replicate it and put a new logo, logo on it. So I don't, I, I work with brands that have real stories. They have to have real history. Tienen que tener algo más de ropa. Porque ahora, como las tiendas, no nomás compran ropa. Compran a lifestyle. It has to be a full lifestyle they're buying into. It has to be a story behind the brand. Or some kind of design element that makes it different. You know what I mean? Sí. Y, you know, y es lo que encuentro en, en, en diferentes marcas. En tu opinión, cuando una marca quiere comenzar, ¿qué es como... ¿Cómo tú lanzarías una marca nueva para crear el hype? Mm. ¿Cuál es el proceso? El proceso es... Um, hay diferentes cosas, pero el proceso... Yo, con cada marca que tengo en mi showroom... Like, siempre... Si tú me dices a mí, hey, estas son las tres, cuatro, whatever, cinco cosas que una marca tiene que tener mm. para tener un chance para pegar, ¿cuáles son esos? La primera cosa es content. The packaging, se tiene que mirar, you know, las fotos tienen que estar, you know, bien chilos. You know what I mean? Like, you have to have a very, very strong content base. Número uno, chidas fotos. Okay. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> y luego, la, la, la segunda cosa, you know, you need to have the right people wearing it. You need to have, you know, if, if your product isn't truly different, if you don't have something really innovative about the brand, then two, you need to have the right people attached and wearing it, or the right designer behind it. Sí. You know what I mean? Because so, nowadays, you know, you know, menswear is so saturated. Hay tantas marcas se miran iguales y, you know what I mean? Y las tiendas, los, los buyers me dicen, like, yo, like, you know, it's, everything looks the same. Like, I really look for something different. You know? Sí. So, And, número dos, producto diferente. Y número tres, la, las personas chidas se tienen que poner el producto, ¿verdad? Pero si el producto no es diferente, el producto necesita que esté, um, just needs to be cheaper. Needs to be affordable. It has need to have a strategy. La, ra la razón por qué trabaja Represent es porque Represent es affordable luxury. Puedes comprar Represent y son las diferentes, so son los mismos fábricos que es, que está usando Fear of God, Amiri, todas esas marcas, you know, luxurious you know, brands. But they sell it at a lower price point. Mm -hmm. So that's their strategy. They are selling affordable luxury. Y es marca cool. Y es marca Encima cool. Encima de eso, sí. All the celebrities are wearing it. Sí. You know what I mean? And so, and it's affordable and it's consistent. You just have to have a strategy. You can't just... So, ¿Tú crees que si, por ejemplo, yo soy un, un pibe ahí que vive, whatever, know, Chicago, Miami, Ciudad de México, whatever, sí, sí, sí. y tengo una marca nueva, diferente, que el producto es diferente, y si yo nomás mando un DM a un estilista y el estilista le gusta, ¿es tan fácil ahora que un, una celebridad potencialmente se pueda ponerte tu ropa? Obvio, tú ya sí, conoces es, a, a las es, personas, eso es diferente, pero Luis hace cuatro años, yeah. no sé si tenía ese cloud. Ya yeah, no tenía ese cloud, pero yo encontraba stylists por, por Instagram y, y sí estaba así, así, así de fácil. Antes era más fácil para encontrar stylists y mandarle mensaje. You send them a link to your brand and boom, it was easier, pero ya ahora como hay tantas marcas, 
todos los stylists que son, you know, the really top stylists, you know, they don't really answer emails. They don't really answer Instagram DMs. Porque in the second somebody knows that they style Migos, the stylist Instagram was crazy and you know what I mean? So it's a lot harder now because it's, the market's a lot more saturated. I got lucky I came in four years ago. I got to meet all these people four years ago. So sí. I've been building with them since then. Sí. You know what I mean? I did that because obviously I saw a menswear gap in Los Angeles. There's no men's showrooms. I, was, I opened the first contemporary menswear showroom in LA. And today, you know, that's how all the stylists end up finding me, a majority of them. Sí. I had a very small network. The most conocido como 10 o 15 stylists. Y ahora tengo como más de 200 stylists que trabajo con. 200. Mm -hmm. Que obvio, sobre los años, tú los conocido yeah. y todo eso. Yeah, over 200 stylists we work with. Wow. Global. Global. Y, ok, ¿cuáles son otras cosas que son importantes cuando creando una marca? Cuando creando una marca, uh, definitely have to have a strategy. Que okay, esto es muy importante. Y la otra cosa es... You know, tienes que, you really have to stay on trend. Lo, lo, que, lo que es más y más, um, <clears throat> no es tan fácil ahora, you know, las, las, las trends están moviendo muy rápidas. Con el internet, you know, the customers really, really, you know, they have a slow attention span. The second a new color is out or the new trend is out, the brands that are winning are the brands that are staying on top of trends. So I definitely recommend always my recommending brands, you know, launch online, por el internet, con tu propia website. Y that's how you're really going to test out the brand if it works. And from there, you know, if it depends. Like I said, every brand is a different strategy. But if you, it depends if you want to make money or if it's like a passion project to you. Mm -hmm. Yo conozco muchas marcas que nomás son passion projects, que no les, no quieren, no, no es importante hacer dinero. Nomás es importan, importante hacer ropa buena. Sí. You know what I mean? Y en tu opinión, ¿qué está pasando con la moda hoy de hombre? Lo que está pasando es, you know, mucha, muchas marcas están saliendo y la gente, the customer, is getting very, what it is really with the internet in general, like they're getting a very short attention span. So las marcas que están haciendo bien o son las marcas que tienen más dinero para promocionar, you know, para hacer promociones con, con, con su ropa. Si no tienes mucho dinero o el dinero para to invest in marketing o to invest in advertising o lo que sea, like, se, lo hace más difícil para trabajar con, you know, para, para cre crecer tu, tu compañía. Sí. You know what I mean? Especially if you're doing a designer menswear brand, which is like the market I work in. You know what I mean? Like you have to do things like show in Paris. Porque todo, todos los buyers más grandes del mundo van a Paris Fashion Week. Para encontrar marcas nuevas. So, ¿Tú exhibes a dónde? ¿En París? Obvio en LA, New York. So, tengo showroom en LA y luego abrimos Trombo Showroom en París uh, dos veces al año por Fashion Week. Por 10 días estamos en París uh, y ahí miramos todos los bares de, de you know, Asia, Europa y también de, de, de los Estados Unidos. Sí. Entonces, los bares más grandes los miramos ahí. Y luego en Nueva York también uh, vamos a y abrimos un showroom during market week y ahí estamos por 10 días, lo mismo y miramos, you know, diferentes bars también, pero now every season, you know, vamos a, our, our sales trip is, or our, our fashion trip during fashion week, vamos a Florence, vamos a Milan, Paris y terminamos en Nueva York. So es un mes okay. de, es, es un mes de uh, the traveling that we do twice a year. Está chido. Yeah. <laughs> um, y ¿Qué tú piensas que es el futuro de Lush? Lo que queremos hacer con Lush es, no quiero ser una agencia de sales, you know, no quiero ser un marketing agency. You know, we are, I want to become a, a record label for brands. We want to become a brand house where we, we've really learned, you know, we were ahead of menswear and I was able to find and put, put together the right brands early on. And so, lo que queremos hacer es queremos empezar a, you know, Creer nos, nosotros, our own brands. We want to sí. create our own brands. And, you know, hay muchos, yo siempre conozco muchos designers que son super talented, you know what I mean? Que tienen, you know, really good ideas, you know, buenas ideas y todo, pero no saben cómo uh, crecer una marca, no saben cómo hacer ropa, o no saben cómo crecer, you know, or do anything, really. They just design very well. So I want to really want to give designers an opportunity and a platform to launch a brand and, you know, take it global. ¿Cuáles son las marcas ahorita que tú crees que están hot en streetwear? 
<clears throat> aparte de, de los obvios, aparte de los like Off White y Hair and Preston y Fear of God yeah. y todo eso, más los like la, las nuevas, las, las up nuevas. and coming. You know the up and coming brands that are really cool right now. Um, and there's a lot, there's a lot. The one, I mean, one that comes to mind definitely is a brand called uh, like For Those Who Sin. I'm not biased because it's in my showroom. I'm a little biased, but it's actually different because. And I, I found this designer, Alex. You know, lo encontré. He, Alex is uh, an illustrator, so he draws all his own graphics. He has his own type that he's putting on his shirts. And so it's really cool because it's really different than what a lot of people are doing. He's actually having a lot of people are knocking him off now because everything he does is illustrated and drawn by him. So it's not only a story of clothing. It's a full art story. It's his whole lifestyle that he's created. And the brand's called For Those Who Sin. So it's a very, like, dark, poetic brand. And so that's why it was really cool for me and I brought it in the showroom because, you know, and he came in and he knew nothing about clothing, you know, how to make clothing. He brought in like blanks that, that he just found like a gilded hoodie blank and like an alternative apparel blank. And he, his drawings, he's, his drawings, he, he, he would take photos of the drawings. Y luego los ponía en su computadora y de la computadora he would create the high res vector files to print on the shirts and the hoodies. He's so, you know, that's something that's super different, you know, that nowadays, you know, muchas marcas no, to, todos los graphics que tienen en sus, en sus camisas o lo que sea, nomás lo encuentran en el, inter, en el internet, you know what I mean, y lo, they, you know, they'll change the color or do something different and then put it on a t-shirt and, you know, he, his art is all truly organic, is his, right. you know what I mean. ¿Cuáles son otras marcas? Otra marca que está muy chula, uh, I really like, um, a brand like Cobb Amp is really cool. ¿Cómo se escribe? Cavempt. C-A-V-E-M-P-T. Cavempt is another really cool brand. You know, it's really just stayed true to its own roots. You know what I mean? It's doing really well. Um, another brand that's really cool, let's see. And I know a lot of people. A lot of different brands. Yeah, you got to be careful who you exactly. think, who do not include. I got to be careful who I don't include. <laughs> um, you know what I mean? Like, I really like what, um, <clears throat> like, the brand, like, Pleasures is doing some really cool shit. It look as pleasures is you know just really cool graphics. They're making it super affordable. You know what I mean. They just wanna. They really think that si algo está tan cool, like quieren que todos lo compren. Sí. And I think that's really what, how it should be. You know sí. I mean? Hay muchas marcas que hacen ropa y está you know y, y, y costa tanto. You know, las camisas son 200 dólares. Los hoodies como 300. Los pantalones a 500, 600. Like you know, kids can't buy that. You know what I mean. Right. I mean, like, like it's hard for people to keep buying the masses to keep buying, you know, five, six dollar denim. Right. So I really like what Pleasures is doing because you know, really cool graphics, kind of a dark poetic aesthetic, similar to like a for those who sin, but um, their whole branding, the content, you know, the Instagram is oh, like super cool. Super marca. cool. You know what I mean? The other marca que me gusta mucho es llama Chinatown Market también. Yeah. Yeah, they're doing some really cool shit. Really cool. Shit. Yeah. Okay, so tú quieres ser como disquera para ropa, para las marcas de, de ropa. ¿Tienes un proyecto ahorita que estás trabajando que ya ha salido o todos están en proceso ahorita? So, tenemos, tenemos una que, 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 ya, que ya salió. You know, it's similar story to like, for those who en, encontré una marca que se llama Siberia Hills. Y Siberia Hills era una marca que más encontré en internet. On High Beast, again, you know, I saw this photo shoots that salieron con un photo shoot con Ian Connor. Y nomás era un, you know, un, una camisa, pero la, la marca en, en Instagram, you know, estaba haciendo, like, it was really, like, Instagram was growing like crazy, and it was getting really hyped, and so, um, I ended up just meeting, I ran into the designer in LA through a mutual friend, y yo le dije, like, yo, like, I want to do your sales, like, I want to help you with the brand, y yo no sabía si no tenía dinero, o si, you know, whatever, I just told him, like, I like your brand, yeah, I'm with you, so we brought him in the showroom, we took a meeting, and we ended up finding out that, you know, he needed, he, he just didn't really know too much about fashion, but he had all these really cool designs just like in his head and drawn out. And I was like, well, like this can be cool. Like, you know, we can help you find a production team and help you really make clothing and make mm -hmm, it like a real mm -hmm. collection. And, mm -hmm. you know, I can't sell one graphic to a, to a store, you know, at this point, this was like a year ago when I met him. Ya tenía, ya tenía como más de 100 tiendas que, que conocía yo, so, you know, por si tengo una, si tenía una marca buena, like, I can easily put it in, you know, top 50 stores worldwide, like, right sí, away. Sí, sí, And so, um, we helped him, you know, build out a collection, and 
you know, he, we found him a production team and, you know what I mean? And we just showed his brand in Paris last season and it's like one of our newer projects that we were like fully... Super cool, Marca. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sí, yeah, super cool, super cool. Yeah. Okay, y, okay, rapidito, ¿cuáles son cinco, seis o siete de las mejores tiendas del mundo de lujo? Cinco, seis, so... so <coughs> One of the mejores tiendas in Los Angeles, you know, okay, H. Lorenzo is like a really cool store with the whole aesthetic of the store, y, you know, y las marcas que tienen, y, you know what I mean? The, everything about H. Lorenzo, I think, is super, super cool. I think they're doing really good. You know, Maxfields is another one, you know what I mean? They're really ahead of, their, ahead of what they're doing. You know, Maxfields, antes, you know, gente lo conocían por, porque tenían marcas como Gucci, Saint Laurent, y, you know, all these super, super designer, you know, brands, and they started bringing in these like youth streetwear brands and doing mm -hmm. these pop-ups and were really like, you know what I mean? Really also the Abel's because of LA, LA just became super popular. Like I think Maxwell's was like ahead of what they were doing, which is really cool. Y luego, um, in Italia, la, la tienda Antonia is really, really cool as well. Anton Antonioli, se llama. Antonioli. Antonioli Milan, really, really cool store, the whole aesthetic and the vibe, you know what I mean? They have a lot of, all the great brands, you know, Off-White, Marcelo, Balenciaga, you know, look there. And then, um, let's see, other stores I've visited and been to in Australia, it's cool stores, Lessons, Lessons in Australia. You know, empezó como una, una tienda muy, muy chiquita como 424, luego de ahí se crecieron y, you know, ellas, they were the first store in Australia to even carry, like, cool streetwear. And I, they started when Lush started. So yo los conocí cuando empezaron y ellos, ellos compraban todas las marcas que tenía represent, and C2H4, NDG, like anything I'd find, Lessons in Australia would buy it. And so they became the biggest and coolest store in Australia to carry. You know, now today, ellos tienen marcas como Marcelo Berlón, tienen Palm Angels, tienen, you know, Off-White, tienen Yeezy, tienen todo the Midnight Studios y las marcas de nosotros y todo. So Lessons is also really, really cool. Um, and... I mean, yeah, those are those. I would say those are like the coolest stores to be in right now. You know, in New York, Patron of the New, really rad store. Again, you know, they have the coolest brands. They were really a pioneer for New York for all these like newer type brands. You know, sí. ellos no tienen marcas como Balenciaga, Saint Laurent, tienen, you know, like like the other similar like cooler luxury streetwear brands. You know, what I mean, they're doing some cool shit there. Dime cinco influencers en mercado de moda de hombre que son super influencers. Like super influencers, I would say like Lucas Abad really, you know what I mean, is, is influence the game. He, you know, he's really transitioned now. El, el está haciendo, el está como en diferentes TV shows y diferentes, you know, as actor. Pero empezó a, you know, this New York kid que nada más se, se vestía, muy, you know, diferente. So, you know, Lucas Abad, another one, Bloody Osiris, really, really cool, really, you know, fashion forward, he's really ahead. Um, Gully Guy Leo, you know, 15, 16 year old kid out, out of out of London, you know what I mean? Like, I just did a photo shoot with Leo, you know what I mean? Like, it was a huge impact for us, you know what I mean? He's really, really, again, just kind of grew up in this Instagram age. He, you know what I mean? He was really different. He supported las marcas como Supreme, Palace Skateboards. He was really just about all this hype shit. He, él empezó, yo lo conozco ya, y él empezó nada más comprando Supreme, y lo compraba. Se, se tomaba una foto con el Supreme y luego lo vendía y compraba diferentes, you know, cosas de Supreme y Pelle Skateboard Seal. So, so miraba como siempre tenía más Supreme, like he had a huge closet. He just buy and sell everything, mm -hmm. which is crazy. So Leo's another one that's super big. Um, let me see, someone else, like a Lely Maid, super dope as well. Really, really sick influence, um, really dope style. Um, I'd say like those are like the top people right now, for sure. He, um... Déjame pensar que te iba a preguntar. Actually, I lost my train of thought. Y, y cuando tú estás buscando como un influencer, ¿qué es lo que tú buscas en ellos? ¿Qué es la, la cosa importante para ver si eres como tú en el lado como de la marca o mm -hmm. consultario? Like, ¿qué, qué, ¿Qué buscas en una persona? Bueno, well, la primera cosa, like en Instagram, lo que miro es, I look at who's following them. Eso es algo, algo grande. Es... es Tienes que mirar, you know, who's following them. That's a really, really big thing. Y luego de ahí, you know, pues miramos cómo, cómo la, tienes que mirar qué marcas están poniendo. That's really, really important, the brand mix. Si, si un influencer se está poniendo marcas que, you know what I mean, aren't that cool, they're wearing, you know what I mean, like lower-end brands, like 
that's really like a sign for us to not work with them. Like they they have to keep the integrity of you know the brands they're wearing. They have to wear really cool streetwear, luxury stuff. You know what I mean? Sí. So that's a really important thing. Es muy importante. ¿Y cuáles son algunos de los celebridades que has trabajado grandes, por ejemplo, con Lush o el magazine y todo eso? The celebrities que hemos trabajado. Yeah. Um, like musicians, actors, etc. I mean, ahorita traba, you know, nosotros mandamos ropa a, a todos. I mean, ayer lo mandamos ropa a Isaac Rocky. Uh, yo he trabajado con conmigos muchas veces. He was actually um, un amigo mío, Marco. Uh, era el stylist, el stylist de ellos, de amigos por como dos, tres años cuando empezaron con Versace y todo. Y cuando amigos se pusieron, you know, muy popular y la música, es, you know what I mean, it was getting really big. Marco me, me llamaba y yo le ayudaba a encontrar ropa para amigos porque tenían un chingo de music videos, shows y más necesitaban tanta ropa. Y yo conocía todas las marcas. So me hablaba Marco, yo le, yo le encontraba marcas, le mandaba, you know, las represent y todas las marcas que tenía yo y... Um, I, I've worked with no, like on a couple of video shoots with him. I actually went to Miami. Yo me fui a Miami, trabajé con Marco uh, for the Slippery music video with Gucci Mane. We co-styled it with him. Y teníamos dos días para juntar 15 diferentes outfits for the three amigos and Gucci Mane. Shit. 15 outfits in two days. I literally took half of my showroom <laughs> to Miami with Marco. <laughs> Uh, y trabajaste también con J Balvin, ¿verdad? Ya, yeah, con J Balvin también. So, ya tengo como unos seis meses empe empecé a trabajar a, a consultar por for the store Luis Villaroma. De, son de Florence, pero es, es probably the, I think it is now the biggest store in Italy. Era, era uno de los primeros uh, websites que, que vendía ropa como Dolce Gabbana o you know, muchas marcas de italianos. Y so, yo... Empecé a trabajar con Luis Severo, más, nomás traer diferentes celebrities a, a hacer diferentes, uh, you know, photo shoots or collaborations with Luis Severo, más, y uno de, los, uno de los primeros era J Balvin. So we did a photo shoot with him in, uh, in Paris last season. Era super cool, J Balvin is muy amable, you know, really nice guy, like, you know, and I, I got to produce and co-style that shoot for them. And, you know, what's really cool, Luis Villaroma tiene cada marca. Tiene Amiri, Saint Laurent, Balenciaga, Fendi. Like, they have everything, designers. So, you know, we got to pull from their entire store for the photo shoot, which is super cool. Qué chido. Yeah. Um, okay, so, ¿qué, ¿cómo tú quieres que las personas se te acuerden de, de Luis cuando, cuando tú ya tienes como 60, 75 años? I want them to... I would say, I just want to do cool shit, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> I like, feel you, brother. That's it, bro. You know, no, I just want to do cool shit. You know what I mean? Um, lo que quiero hacer es, you know, en, en, en el futuro, yo quiero, yo quiero, yo quiero, you know, la agencia que, I really want to invest in cool designers that I think need an opportunity and have the, the real talent to, you know, have like a brand. Yo encuentro muchos, muchos, muchas marcas que, They're just so popular. The designs are so forward, and you know what I mean. Like they have so much potential, but no tienen dinero para, para you know, crecer la marca. Y, you know, sadly in today's market, like you in fashion, like it's a very tough market. You know what I mean? It's muy difícil para crecer una marca. Cuesta mucho dinero hacer ropa. You know what I mean? Especially, especialmente si estás haciendo ropa en Los Angeles. Si quieres hacer, you know, pantalones y you know, jackets y bombers y todo, like. You know, puedes gastar como unos ocho o diez mil dólares, even cinco mil dólares, sí. Y muchos de esos designers, you know, I mean, no tienen dinero para hacer eso. Y, you know, I mean, I want to give people opportunities and, and really create this, like, brand house that, where we can find and really, like, a record label has a &Rs. Like, I'm like a fashion a &R. Like, I know sí, how to sí, find sí. these brands, you know what I mean? And so I definitely sí, want to... Sí, tú eres el fucking fashion a &R. Yeah, I'm a fashion a &R. <laughs> You know what I mean? To all my Desde friends que te conozco... Industry, Tú eres el fashion I know how to find what's cool. You know what I mean? I find what's cool. You know what I mean? I, and, and so um, all, every single brand I've had come in my showroom has done well, has grown. Celebrities wear it. Like, I, I don't have to force brands, my brands on people. Sí. Gente lo quieren poner. You know what I mean? Sí, Gente sí, los sí. encanta la ropa. Y okay, la final pregunta. Si tú, estás a, si tú de 75 años estás hablando de Luis, a Luis a 24 años, ¿cuál es el consejo que tú le das a él para que llegue a ese punto? <coughs> Really, anything is possible. 
you know what I mean? yeah. Yo creo que, you know, puedes hacer lo que quieras. No tienes que, you just really have to believe in it. And I really believe, like, um, like the law of attraction, you know what I mean? Like, I learned that at a really young age. Cuando estaba muy, muy, empezó cuando estaba en high school, siempre decía, like, you know, like, me voy a mover a Los Angeles, like, you know what I mean? Like, why I said algo big, you know what I mean? Like, I'm gonna, like, I would always just picture myself. I would have pictured, you know, I wouldn't know what I was gonna do at all, but I would picture myself living in Los Angeles, like, driving a Range Rover and just, like, driving down Sunset. Like, I would love going on Sunset when I was a kid. You know, tenía como 14 años la primera vez cuando vine. Y me acuerdo que, you know, viviendo en, en Salinas o en, 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 en Fresno, you know, no había carros, you know, bonitos. Like, everybody had, like, trucks y Hondas and había muchos mexicanos. So there was never a Rolls Royce. You never saw a Rolls Royce. No right. mirabas Lamborghinis, no mirabas Ferraris, lo que sea. Cuando tenía 14 años y vine a Los Ángeles la primera vez, Miraba todos esos carros. Era, era como nada, you know. Sí, sí, sí. Range Rovers is are like Hondas here. You know what I mean? <laughs> so siempre, siempre I would always picture myself doing these things. And I was, I was, I believed in like the law of attraction. Not even, I was doing it without even thinking about it. Sí. But people today, you know, I mean, I would tell the young Luis, to, you know what I mean? Like anything is possible. Me gusta. Okay. ¿Quieres promover algo? Yeah, so, um... Y tengo una pregunta más después de eso que me olvidé pre pre preguntarte. So, uh, follow Lush Network. El Instagram es nomás at Lush Network, Lush Network uh, Mi Instagram es LFCano. Uh, mi nombre es Luis Fernando Cano Hernández. But I go as Luis Cano, way shorter. Way shorter. <laughs> Cada latino tiene cuatro nombres. Cuatro nombres, nombres. nombres, sí, es verdad. A veces cinco. Yeah, a veces cinco. <laughs> um, yeah, just, you know, follow LFCano. You know, voy a empezar a poner muchos más posts de, you know, las marcas, you know, que estoy haciendo, my travels to Milan and Paris and, you know, all the different cool people we work with. Una pregunta más. Como tú tienes la edad de hartas personas que están oyendo este podcast y como nomás tienes 24 años y tú has progresido harto como una persona de 24 años que está, bueno, yo, yo soy como un viejo comparado a ti en la moda y yo mm -hmm. sé, yo comencé también cuando tenía 21 años y, sí, sí, sí. you know, ya cuando yo tengo, ya tengo 38 años y, y, y veo a los chicos que tienen 24, 25, tú de, definitivamente estás súper progresado y súper avanzado para un chico, mm -hmm. porque no llegan hasta los 30 de tener you know, el network y el poder que, que tú tienes ahora. ¿Cuál es el aviso que tú le dices a una persona que, tiene, que quiere entrar en la moda para, nomás para entrar? Mm -hmm. like, ¿Qué es que tú le dices a ellos? Para, para entrar... Tienes que saber que los primeros dos años no vas a hacer dinero. No vas a hacer nada de dinero. You just have to learn. Just be a sponge. Try to get in and interning for a brand. You know, encuentra una compañía o si hay, whether it's a, you know, a PR company o si es un, you know, una marca grande o lo que sea. Y, you know what I mean? You're going to have to intern and, and really get your feet wet before ever expecting money from it. And if you can do that, Everybody needs help. All these brands need help. I needed help. You right. know what I mean? Like, I worked, I myself, trabajé por un año antes que hiciera un dólar. Sí, sí. Pero en ese año, you know, I learned so much. I really, you know what I mean? Really got ahead. Boom, boom, chiqui, mm -hmm. boom, boom. Okay, so ahí estamos, amigos. Latinos Unidos, Luis Cano. So, yo no sabía tanto de Luis antes de esto. Lo que aprendí son... Muchas cosas que me encanta como él nomás manda correo, texto a cualquier persona. Yo vengo como de, de una edad que a veces piensas, no, no, no puedes hacer eso si tú necesitas una introducción. Pero lo que yo he notado de hartas personas de tu edad, no importa, nomás le mando un mensaje a cualquier persona. So, acuérdate, siempre tienes que mandar un mensaje a cualquier persona. Who cares si te dicen que no, porque... Don't be shy. You got nothing to lose. Exactamente. Uh, segundo es que you know, él siempre ha tenido un ojo y siempre como ha estudiado la, la moda obvio que tienes que tener buen ojo pero él ha estudiado y, 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 yo, y yo lo veo él y, y él es siempre una persona que yo le pregunto hey what's cool, like, qué está chido ahorita en la moda y él aparte de, de tener buen ojo siempre ha estudiado y siempre está alrededor de personas que están haciendo lo que está hoy día y también más importante lo que van a ser los de mañana. So, siempre te tienes que estar alrededor de personas que tú quieres aspirar a trabajar con ellos o tú crees que van a ser los, los próximos meros meros. Um, otra cosa es que, you know, 
es de, 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 de saber cómo pegar una marca nueva. Y todas las cosas, lo que él dijo hoy día, uh, como yo crecí una marca, la manera en que yo crecí una marca es como se dice ancient, ya no sirve. La manera nueva es como él dijo, mira, tienes que tener un producto diferente, uh, tienes que tener una historia, tienes que tener el contenido, tienes que tener ese, como se dice en inglés, un full package, un paquete entero. Uh, y si no tienes esas cosas, el producto, la historia, el diseñador, a ver, el diseñador está relacionado con el producto y la historia y últimamente el contenido y con eso hoy día puedes lanzar una marca y tienes que tener cada una cosa uh, importante. Y encima de eso, si tienes eso, maybe tienes chances de tener a las personas que son celebridades y todo eso, de ponerte tu ropa y eso te va a acelerar más uh, los logros para la marca. So, con eso, Latinos Unidos, soy Andrés Isqueta. Muchas gracias, Luis Cano. Gracias. Gracias, amigo. We out. Gracias por ver otro episodio de Latinos Unidos. Soy Andrés Isquieta, por favor suscriben a mi YouTube, mi iTunes y los veo la próxima vez. Chao, chao.